That's true. But we said already, this Chaos Knight is not going to be your POS 1 or even your POS 2. This is going to be a POS 3. So they are very free and mobile with those picks. Then in that case, if you pick up the AM, Team Secret are already kind of locked in this scenario where they're going to have to have a Dark Sea on the outer lane. There's no way you can put him in the mid. In which case, you are relying on dodging out the combat. Because I don't think there's any way to set up well against an AM right now. It's not bad with a Tiny, I guess. But still... Darkseer is that type of hero. You pick him so he can farm effectively early on. Yeah. Now we are, and again, we 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 shouldn't overlook the possibility of this cast, cast knight sliding over to the one position either. Although, all right, okay, they are going to go ahead and and pick that juggernaut as you suggested. Uh, you know, we talked about the bane being the BKB breaker on the side of NIP. There is no BKB way to deal with BKB on secret. I guess uh, I guess toss. Um. They changed that, didn't they? I'm pretty sure. That yeah, that's that. right. That's yeah. right. They did change that. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's gone. Mm -hmm. There's no option right now. Secret, what do they need? Most likely a mm -hmm. mid in this scenario. Not many you can yeah, get but... that can actually pierce spell muni either. Exactly. Exactly. This is where in other situations, you see a lot of teams get backed into picking void fifth pick because they need a core and they need a core that can deal with that with those BKBs with spell immunity and Chronosphere is the obvious way. Well, you obviously can't really pick Void once you are once you have Life Stealer on board. I don't think this is a Visage game either. I don't think they can run that in the mid. Like maybe depending uh, on what Nip no. picks in the mid, but it's not great against these other heroes right now. I'm trying to think of some that actually ramps up and amplifies the damage output of the Life Stealer while giving additional control in the fight. Ban of the Viper. Interesting. So what are they doing? Are they going to run like a... OD maybe? Yeah. I've already banned out the Razor. I mean, are they going to do something cheesy like Huskar? Possibly. Because the problem is, if you go for like the Outward Devourer, you're in a lot of trouble when it comes to the Chaos Knight. Because you're forced uh, to put yeah. the BKB, and even then, there's going to be a Fiend's Grip. Yes, they want to use it on the Lifestealer, but they won't hesitate for that mid-game to use it on the OD. Yeah, I think OD feels feels super risky. It, it it it's it's viable though. I can see. I can definitely see a world where they go for that. I don't like the, the big drow the big thing that I'm seeing in this draft. Right, is the big problem with the previous draft was that Secret just had this massive mobility advantage. Okay, that when you look at Doom and Razor as your cores, it's just too much. It, it, NIP is is too reliant at just at, at running at you, right? And you have these heroes in secret that you need to get in the back line and get on top of and control, like the Drow, even like when you talk about how it plays against the Doom, the Absor Rubik. And you, you definitely don't see the same kind of thing in this draft. I actually, maybe, okay, maybe Team Secret, what they do is they just forget about dealing with the BKB. You, just, you pick something like a puck with your last pick, and you just go full out aggression, run the puck mid, and 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 get those infest bombs going early. That's the thing. If you can actually snipe out Nip's back line, they run out of a lot of kill potential, right? With the Bane Fiend script being gone, and if they don't get the Ignis down, their team fight potential is kind of weak. All right, the puck to file Ooh. pick that gives them some early push aggression as that, well, and that also takes away. They ban the Husker and they pick. The Pugna, the two heroes that we were talking about, Husker and OD, they ban one of them and they pick the hard lane encounter to the other. Very nice, nice tail into this draft here by Peter. And I just don't know that there's a pick here that that deals with what's on board for NIP and still gives Secret the same kind of mobility that they enjoyed in the previous draft. Maybe you just do that's the Ember. That's not the one I expected. No. Okay, mid one Ember. I mean, I'm hyped for it. You know me, Haas. I love to see some Ember. I was hesitant I, to even mention it though, with the bane on the field. Oh, I and mean, he just gets ab. I think he just gets abjectly crushed against this Pugna. Fata is. I, I mean, does Fata not just eat his lunch in this landing matchup? Maybe not. The changes to the slight fist mean you can get one value point now and easily regularly dodge out the never blast. That might the be the side factor. Sure, sure. But you're still you're still dealing with the fact that Pugna is just this ridiculously high move speed range hero. Well, he did get a slight nerf. He got a slight nerf, remember. There was a that's true, that's five true. move speed reduction. 
I think there's going to be... The, the crucial thing is going to be watch the first few waves. If mid one can actually be ahead on CS by the time they both get to level 3, I think there's kill potential there. Um, but the problem is you're going to have to wait to tank and never blast and then activate the flame guard instantly and move forward for the serum chains. Otherwise, you'll wait until level 4 where you have to decide if you want to go for 2 points in the chains or 1 in the slight with 1 in the chains. Yeah, I, I also like I like this game as as a test of secrets adaptability because we know how well that they've adjusted to this new play style where it's really Nisha getting the farming focus and mid one being more of the playmaker and space creator. But as the season goes on, and this is something that we saw with the secret roster last year, the good teams are going to adjust to that. They're going to make you play in different ways. And this is an example of a draft where they're going to have to give mid one a little bit more farm priority. Nisha is going to have to be a little bit more active earlier. Yes, I I know with what we've seen from Lifestealer so far in the qualifiers, you don't necessarily want to say that because we've seen way too much of this, you know, Midas, Radiance, Manta, Lifestealer. I, I don't think you want to do that in this game. No, it has come at a cost. You need heroes that can definitely guarantee you that space. And Oh, this is the type of hero that can. Mid one, his playstyle fits this. And at the same time, Ember Spirit is a hero designed right now to just function as kind of mid-game tempo control and aggression type carry. Maybe you can make someone happen. I'm just concerned about once PBD reaches six. Like, this, this is a clear Fiend's Grip target. Yes, that means Nisha will be free to do what he wants, but that does also mean a very squishy hero is going to be locked in place for several seconds to be killed. Yeah. Well, you say that, but again, as we've said so often with Secrets Draft, a lot is just going to depend on how much this four-position tiny in the hands of Yafsar is going to get, because if he gets a time loop blink dagger, you know, which he are, I love Yafsar so much, he already has a queued up in his quick buy. I mean, he knows uh, what he wants. But th that that takes away a lot of the deficiencies that we're worried about from Secret. Already invaded. Well, that's three heroes, guys. Yeah, three on three, Ashley. Die hanging around needs to be careful because, of course, he has leveled in the Iron Shell. Ace has the spin ready. Besides, against it, just going to harass him down a little bit. They'll back away. It'll be two runes apiece. No. All right, so are we going to. I wonder, are they going to stay in this Tri V Tri set here, bottom? No, it looks like. I don't think so. You have to switch it off. Peter's Bane is already transitioning out. Like, Jug should be able to stay on his play own. Trip. Just gonna, gonna play chase. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that you pick Jug into Darks here, right? Is that, you know, Jug not only does he has the, the have the healing wave, uh, healing ward against the Ion Shell, but with that ten more base agility, I mean, he can tank creep waves under tower. Die already stacking a lot of Ion Shells here, just trading damage where he can. Maybe not too effectively. His Ace does get a good spin out. The Lunate Blast actually clips on the Zai, mm -hmm. gets him pretty low. Puppy forced to level in the Frostbite at level 1. Usually you want to try and get a point in the Crystal Nova, but no choice in the matter. <laughs> and meanwhile, Yapsor and, and Peter just sort of going back and forth down here in the Radiant Jungle as, as Yapsor has grabbed a full creep wave. Peter furiously trying to block. Not uh, working out. Yapsor just turning around every once in a while like, Anakin's. hello, over here. But we, while we're talking about that, mid one has crushed the first couple of waves mid. He is even on CS with this Pugna. It's a good sign as well because you should actually easily be stopped in the first wave or two. You use the flame guard and instantly it'll be Boy. blasted out. A, a lot of damage inflicted uh, by these two nip supports on their counterparts from Secret. Making him pay for pulling this creep wave off. Yeah, PBD sticking with it. Meanwhile, Zai did try and cut the wave as well, but Ace says no to that. Him on the top, one-on-one -on -one scenario. Now, this should favor Nisha a bit, but not as much as people think due to the new Chaos Strike allowing you to sustain on health a little bit. And that is a Bane that just chased the two supports back under their own Tier 3 tower. I love how Peter is playing this lane early on. I'll focus on getting the XP early on, just making sure he keeps up the aggression. Of course, Bane, one of the most effective heroes at level 1 brawling. He won the land of 33. Him and Nisha are getting so low, and... The difference here is 33, well, 33 is needs to watch region. out because Yapsor and Puppy are rotating up to this top lane outside of Vision. If he comes forward to get this creep wave, he is probably going to die. Good game sense there. He backs away. It reveals what they were trying to plan there. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, the Cory just got sniped out. PPD, he was waiting for it. And now mid one might go down here. First blood drawn. Yeah. 
Problematic there, getting caught out in such an awkward way. He tried to pull away from the creep wave, and we talked about this level three power spike, but you're a level behind now. And this is where Father wow. gets his advantage on the Pugna. Yeah, I mean, he traded effectively. No, no, he, it's his courier that ends up getting sniped. So yeah, that, okay. Oof, yeah, no. Oof. So PBD was waiting behind the uh, behind the tower. And they'll finally find and kill off the Bane, punish him for these movements around the map. Come on, just trying to aggress a little bit. Trying to force some regen out of Farda, knowing that he doesn't have core usage anymore. It means that he has to try and get as much value out of trading as he can. Yeah, look at Yapsor here, lying in wait, and Fada. Uh, NIP has been ready for the secret rotations in this game. Spot them much, all out. Much better in the early game. And it just feels like Secret weren't quite ready for the moves that Peter's made up to this point so far, because this has yeah. been an oddly aggressive roaming Bane. Still level one, by the way. No, he's just oh, spent all his time on the dire side of the map. Fada? Can they touch him? Yapsor's getting close. It looks like he's a little bit too far away, though. Free, free, four movement speed over free, free, free. And one of them has boots. No points for guessing which. Hey, look, P's arrived in the mid lane finally. Yeah, and and now we have the usually three v three mid with one v one on both the side lanes. Sure, of course. Meanwhile, the top is proving as hilarious as ever. This time, though, thirty three starting to win the exchanges as he levels more into that chaos strike. He'll be able to sustain himself better in this lane. Then all of a sudden, Isha should be at a disadvantage. Yeah, everybody's farming here, but the side of NIP is starting to open a bit of a gap. You say a bit. We're four and a half minutes in. It's a 2k net worth lead right now. Yeah, that that's that's getting concerning. It's pretty substantial this stage of the game. And, oh, uh, mid one. Oh, he mistimed it. Ooh. The slight fist dodge was not there, and that hurt. Finally has the courier back up and ready coming across now. Meanwhile, Zai yeah. does fall Catches in the bot lane, the... and they're jumping to the top. Looking for a kill. Nisha getting low. 33. He's scouting. He's got his abilities at the ready. He'll turn around with Yap, so the big crit comes out. Oh. They toss over onto the tower. They think that they can get a kill on the PPD and Nisha living live on the edge. We'll go down to the right clicks of fame before falling himself. 33, he's the true champion in this fight as he kills off Yapsor as well. Wow, advantage NIP all around. And all of a sudden, that, that net worth advantage that you talked about balloons to 3k. 4k. <laughs> it's going even higher. Oh, boy. Every second you look. Yeah, this time is getting runes. worrisome. Keep in mind, Nip got all four runes there. So NIP, yeah. they are looking pretty dominant right now. Now, mid one is going to reach level six soon. That's a huge power spike for the side of Secret. It's whether he can make something happen at this rate. And I d All right. Okay. Things are happening. I'll Saxa. Take I'll take that. Odd for him to get caught out like that. Well, probably the fastest hero in the game by base. And they're chasing on the tower. TP's coming in right now. Saxa cancels oh, he has in to the cancel. end. He can't risk it. He knows if he goes straight in, there's going to be an avalanche oh. toss back into the iron shells. Puppy, and he's coming dead. In, oh. puppy coming in on top here. 33 under a little bit of threat. But yeah. 33 he's... does get the lifesteal off before moving away, which is crucial to stay alive there. Yeah. Yeah, he's got three points in that chaos strike. That's a lot of sustain. Exactly. This is the thing that we were talking about. Like, with the new changes to Chaos Knight, he might not be this crazy ridiculous right but carry anymore at the moment but what he does have is a lot of sustain which especially with the changes to vlad's and the removal of headdress being needed is something that a lot of new off lanes are mid looking one, towards mid one mid one oh, he's gonna get low they don't finish him off though salves up might look to turn around here but he still doesn't have level six you know just pressure on the crap out of this ember spirit and so far he is getting no room for a ball. Uh, again, it's it's seven kills at the seven minute mark. It's been a lot of action in the early game with, with a lot of exchanges that haven't led to kills on top, but by far the most significant part is just this giant economy advantage that, that NIP's be able, been able to amass, and that's not all the bounty runes. Oh no, indeed it's not. They've found a decent amount of farm. 33 is the poorest farm in one right now, and he's matching Nietzsche, just to put it in perspective right now. Dark Seer, the worst off of the secret bunch when it comes to the course. And this is what I'm talking about. Look at the open wounds, right? Yeah. Nisha has to use the Infest just to make sure he's in a formidable location because he knows the Phantasm is available for 33. Well, and, and Secret looking like they wanted to set up a play behind the Ember Spirit mid, but... 
He's Zai. forced back to base there. Uh, Zai almost goes down here. Ace is diving. He wants to Omni Slash this if need be. There's an Illuminate being charged up, and Zai doesn't realize it. Saxa gets the kill, Man. barely clipping it. Yeah, that's the second time that Zai's died to just getting clipped by Illuminate here in the early game. It's tough. Darkseer, not a hero that really aims to play from behind. It's just meant to be this yeah, safe farmer. Uh, they going for it? Tiny. Okay. Under his own tier one. And Fada hadn't even reached yet for the rotation there. There was no Decrepify. There was no life drain. That was just a dive. Boy, oh boy. You have to look forward and question. Secret just getting pushed back across the map. But you have to look forward, though, it's... and question what do they do? Because Nisha's not going to be ready to fight anytime soon. And he's kept busy at all times by 33. Well, what they do is right now Ember with a DD rune, right? He's got to make something happen down here, but you mentioned it, right? They're, a lot of their playmaking potential is wrapped up in this Ember spirit, and they he's been pressured so effectively. Very true. And you always have that issue that actually, unless there's a creep wave nearby, Ember can't really go for the play. And now Phantasm in the top lane, 33. He's going to try and make Poppy pay for this. Has to back away, though. As the open wounds come out, they finally managed to kill him off. Chaos Knight might be in trouble. He's just chasing him, oh, but there's the Chaos Strike again. Keeps 33 nice and healthy. Almost impossible to blow through this guy. Yeah, the mid one, while we're saying that, loses his tower mid. Not surprising to Fata, but Fata is going to TP back, going to walk back to base here and like more than likely TP out, try to make a play. The TP for 25 seconds, yeah, so a long wait. You see the line drawn from Peter. Now where they want to be. Mid one, meanwhile, just continue to farm up the mid lane. He's heading towards the boost to travel. Still got a long way to go, though. I think I think NIP are going to run the same play that they ran at five minutes. They're going to try and put themselves in position to pressure and claim all the bounties again. I'm not sure if you can contest it either. Well, you might oh, find wow. this kill. Avalanche right. toss out into Saxa, but there's the blind of light. A little that bit too tanky. Right up. Well, it's, not, it's not the powerhouse tiny. This is a level five tiny. Ten minute mark. Hit that hard. Nisha is trying yeah. to get across the runes. 33 will stun him up. Don't worry. They're chasing him on PPD. The Avalanche is going to come out. The Illuminate is being charged up. We'll hit the Poppy. They turn around. They didn't okay. brain sap him. No. They Nightmare instead. A little bit of a mistake from PPD. They'll still find the kill afterwards, but not before Peter goes down. 33 needs to be careful because oh, mid one is here. Beefy. Yep. And there's the Ignis being dropped as well. Sax is going to use the blind and light to ensure they can't chase. They are still staring at the pretty ball. At least get 100 gold for mid one. So getting ever closer. He's going to pick up a bottle instead of going straight for the bots. Yeah, and they and they split the bounty runes too. Secret anticipating the play that NFP were going to try to run there around the 10 minute mark. And and preventing that net worth differential from getting out of control. Well, Big Win is getting that Ignis on the sideline as well. Yep. Nisha once again infesting just to make sure he's healthy. Mid one is moving right now. Remnants across. Looking for 33. Flame guard up. He needs yeah, to be careful and target. quick. target. Yeah, look at the TPs. Rainbow TPs have been initiated. Only Fada will arrive. And mid one will be able to remnant dodge away. Team on the bot lane. Oh, they make a play. CM ulti. Poppy's just learning that snow, but Ace doesn't give a damn. He's going to spin, try and move away. The Iron Shell doing decent damage. Have they got the right clicks? No, they haven't. Oh, that was close. Zai just out of range. I think the Surge maybe was just still on cooldown by a second. Not able to commit his own 75 damage right click, which would have surely killed off Ace. Yeah, you 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 just you got a question, right? We talked about it a lot during the draft, but Secret really has nothing to do with spell immunity, and this jug is going to be able to just be on lanes by himself, split pushing, split farming, uh, and you're very limited in your ability to punish him. And then you just play around the Chaos Knight plus the Pogna that are already ready to fight. Yeah, and I, I don't think when they picked this Lifestealer that they were planning on having Nisha go Midas in this game. I really don't. But he's recognizing mid one's getting getting super pressured here. You know, he's... Mm, it's, it's tough. This is very tough. No easy solution right now. Uh, River. PPD does get the Nightmare out as he gets hit up by the Avalanche. He'll be fine. Should be a continued push by Father in the top lane, though. And you just equal that out with a push in the bot lane by Ace as well. So you get something no matter where it is. You'll gain a tower kill at least. Or will you? Mid one's moving in. He's got the Iron Shell as well. They've added all the damage they can to help him get this kill. There it is. Flame Guard comes out with the Searing Chains. And Fada, you're not escaping that nice. one alive. 
Oh, he needed that so badly. Yeah, he TP'd, TP'd from mid to his own shrine to set up that kill with the TP in to the top tier two as well. Counts for something. And now, mid one's heading towards the blink dagger next. Instead of the boost of travel, taking this in a different direction. Well, he knows. Again, they've they've kind of sort. Of, I I still do believe that when they when they formulated this draft, that they had in mind Nisha being a little bit more of a space creator in this one and giving mid one a bit more farm. But the way the game is gone, uh, their their hopes are very much on the back of Nisha now, and mid one needs to be the one moving around. That's the thing. Like uh, I've seen this blink dagger a few times. Typically, you go into it when you're feeling pressured. You need to mobilize, right? Because the big kind of thing for mid one on this end ball. Ember more so than the no Spirit because there's so many remnants, is the lack of mobility once they're down. And no mobility for Zai as he gets been gripped in the bot lane. Yeah, they converted that kill pretty easily. There's not much Zai can do with three heroes, including the grip in position. It should be a tier one tower that got left just outside of deny range. But he will be able to convert it nonetheless. Secret not in a position to stop this. Mid one does almost have that blink dagger now. But he's been using the Flame Guard to farm, which means he can't use it to kill. And 33 with a minus as well onto his CK. And he says, anything you can do, I can do, well, at least as well, if not better. I think it makes a lot of sense. Again, this, the CK in this particular, the CK in this role is a lot less item dependent than he would be as a safe laner. Yeah, he can afford to go minus here. Just needs to get those points up into the Phantasm. Everybody kind of everybody kind of pivoting back recognizing that this this game is becoming more and more likely to go late as mid one switches it up and does go boots to travel his first item well i'm to split push keep the lanes pushed out because you are running out of ground you've lost all your tier ones now and you've claimed nothing from the side of nip something has to change soon nisha is at least going towards that desolate build as opposed to the big fat radiance which I think is the right move. I think the Radiance is too long to wait before you can have an impact at all. And Ember is so strong in the mid game, even without items, yeah. you need to utilize it. I, I like this adjustment a lot. Nisha. Let's use the Rage pretty early. PPD has been seen, protected by the Decrepify. fight. doesn't matter though. Slow down with the open wounds. He can throw out a nightmare, but it's a little bit too late. He's not going to live. Ignis does get dropped, and Ember does get locked in as well. He's going to move forward with the Remnant. Wants to finish off Searing Chains through. Although he maybe is in a little trouble. Tries to Remnant away, but gets dragged straight back in at 33. We'll begin the crits. Nice vacuum, holds him in oh, place. Nice Still a lot ball. of phantasms, but now Avalanche comes in the toss for as well. And will you oh, build a snowman puppy. or will you puppy with a big ultimate? Yapsle will melt the life drain, but they're chasing on through Fada. We'll go down next. They'll find him. Omni Slash committed just to kill off the Crystal Maiden. <laughs> that is the dire straight of that new freezing build with a plus 10 armor. He couldn't do the damage. They're going to chase forward looking for more. Mid one, ready to go. Fiend going to come out. They need to interrupt it, but guess what? Searing Chains doesn't do that anymore. Illuminate Blast through. We'll get Nisha low. He should pop, but no. He gets in the creep, moves away with the feast. He'll be able to get out with the oh, surge. Nisha stays alive. And mid one. He's looking to get aggressive here. Searing oh, Chains do come ace? out. They need to get rid of healing wards. They might get ace. He's getting pretty low right now. He's not going to be protected. Going to try oh. and go for the spin away. Mid one does throw out the remnant he's a little fine, bit too fine. early. If he held that, maybe you still find the kill. But they were reluctant, especially with Farda respawning and TPing to the mid. Man, there's your ultimate enemy betrayal right there with uh, Ace throwing out the soul Omni Slash on his former captain, <laughs> finally getting rid of that freezing field. But yeah, as you mentioned, that buff to the hero feels super substantial, especially at early levels. There's a lot of armor to work with. Yeah, well, you, it, 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 that's the thing, right? You, you used to not even need the stunner. When when CM channeled, you just want, you just walked up and killed her. Now you actually do need to disable to stop that freezing field. And when you look at it from that perspective, only two heroes have easily accessible stuns. The Bane and the Chaos Knight. It's too big of an right. investment for Coddle. He has to throw down an Ignis if he wants to stun. Well, he wants to throw down Ignis. He's actually heading straight for the refresh next. Just the typical life of a Keeper of the Light player right now. Not too much diversification of build. Oh, yeah. 33. Uh, everybody, everybody watching GH and Yapsor. Open wounds out. Tossed up and down. Chaos Knight knows he's dead. He just uses his stun to farm a creep. That'll be a tough fall. And they commit the ice, uh, the, the ice wall. The wall as well, rather. Yeah, that, that Crimson Guard is going to, by Zai, is potentially going to make a big difference in these fights, too. 
That makes the CK illusions feel a lot less scary, especially on the supports. Same with the Juggernaut. Now, that, well, look at it the correct way, Hart. Freezefield plus Crimson Guard. Puppy's the tankiest hero in the team. <laughs> Pick up a casual bracer, you never die. I mean, we we talked about Puppy and his run at you heroes, but he's sitting there on a, he's sitting there on a level ten CM with tranks. Why not? Let's not forget, this guy's probably got a buckler. Has he got a buckler coming out now? Oh, oh Yapsor here, setting up the play on the top lane. Potentially, he's got Life Sealer inside of him, but just can't quite find the opening with that blink. No, they give up. He just says, go back to farming. Which is unfortunate, considering who just came across to a camp. And they know about it as well, because they have a ward down, but they can't make the jump. They're too paranoid about Bane standing behind him babysitting. Yep. Oh, mid one and Zai just farming around the mid area. The wave isn't here, so they can't push for the tower. They're just trying to free up room on the map so that Nisha can farm more safely in the jungle. As you'd expect from an Ember Spirit player. Who is going for the Blink Dagger next? Now that he's got the boost of travel. He might actually find a kill here on the Saxa if he wants to die. If he has got a DD as well. Problem is they know. They've got a ward down and Fado is close by. It should, come, it should become obvious there, actually. Yeah, I thought I thought he might switch things up, but with the way the heroes played now, and oh, so much smoke spell top. damage, engagement top. They oh, find PPD, wow. and now they're going to hunt for Ace as well. He's got the Omni Slash, but he doesn't want to throw it out on Nisha. And they do oh, that, not want to pursue him. That didn't take long. Don't blink, or you might miss Peter die. If you're someone who spams NA pub games at a high level in the past few years and has felt the wrath of his supporting Phoenixes, you probably feel good about the way he's dying right now. Ace hey, screwed up. Avalanche comes out, forces out the spin. Nisha decides against pursuing any further. No opportunity there for them. Yeah. I mean, even if you get that toss before you can use the spin, I don't think you kill him either. A little bit well, too they're, hard. They're, right now. they're doubling down here on this move on to Ace. Uh, they're going to have all five heroes up here. They are hunting. Got the Infest Bomb at the ready. But there's the wall going down. Slows down Ace. Yeah, decent amount. Forces out the spin. His team is behind him, though. Just in time for the runes. They move forward. PPD does find one, but there's the Avalanche. They can toss forward and finish him off. As they Infest Bomb out. They use the Nightmare to buy a little bit of time, but not enough. They want this tier one, and they might be able to find it now. They're set up. In such a position, there's no real easy way for NIP to interrupt it. Yep. Three out of four bounty runes, too, off the back of that. That's not it's not bad. It's a lot of commitment from Secret, and Yapsor had spent a lot of his time in the top jungles just for two Bane kills, but you know, they're going to get some economic oh. damage out of it. Well, mid one move forward. Jump the gun a little bit. Ace still has that spin. This is the thing. The Jug is a very hard kill, so if you just ignore him and take all his towers, eventually he has to come back to you. Yeah, and it, Jug is not is not off to the kind of farm lead where oh, he's just toss back. probably going to deal with. They found 33. He's going to get Phantasm out now. Now the Ignis does get dropped on oh, the free perfect. heroes. They're going to try and move away. Nisha does get out, but still locking one in place. Puppy trying to run for the high hill. In the meantime, they have lost Zai, and there is the freezer build for oh, nice team to get that. away. And BBD, so scared of it, had to nightmare himself just to make sure he didn't die. It's yeah, the she preview. Gets one, she gets one shot there if she, if she tries to get that freezing field off. In the past. Yep. Instead, yeah, you're getting a preview of what's going to happen once she has a Glimmer Cape. Because if she does and you don't have a sentry at the ready, that's three heroes that would have died there. Yeah, meanwhile, you, you look at this 4K net worth advantage on the side of NIP and you say, okay, well, they you know, they got to be feeling good about the game. But then you realize that's the same advantage that they had 10 minutes ago. They haven't been able to capitalize. And keep in mind that they did go from Midas on that Chaos Knight as well. Yes, yeah. there is one on the other side, but at that's, the same time, you were escalating. Goal. When you think about how that fight went down and what you got out of it, I mean, you got two kills, yes. They weren't exactly big prime kills, though. And instead, you threw out the Phantasm. You threw out the Ignis. It was expensive. Every time you do that, it just frees up the map for Secret to just roam around a little more freely and farm a little bit more aggressively. Uh, at the same time, Secret are approaching this window where they're going to have to start being a lot more aggressive because, you know, Nisha has pivoted from the early Midas into this Deso S&Y build. He's going to be looking to mix it up here. 
That's true. At the same time, you do see mid one dipping towards yeah, the that radiance, radiance is going to come out from him. Okay. This is back to the kind of farm distribution that I expected to see during the draft. And again, I think it's super important as a tier one team that you're able to kind of adjust farm priority on the on the fly, depending on game flow. Puppy. He's feeling like he's on top of the world right now with his freezing build. <laughs> yeah, I know. Still, Everyone. 10 armor. <laughs> you know. Well, everyone seems a little bit scared of him as well, so he'll just move aggressively to D-Ward. Oh, he didn't actually swap the uh, the Obser. Whoops. It would a nice info to have. Yep. See, the three secret cores, meanwhile, all moving toward that bottom lane. Not exactly the best way to go farming. Maybe if you can find Fata's heroes, but Fata's out. None of this. Oh, that, that, wow. A little bit closer than you'd like. But he just get away, I was Poppy. Say, uh oh, Ace is on a kiss chase, but his days ha uh, his date rather has bailed out on him. That's oh, pretty tough. And the replacement date is quite a uh, a butch lass. Needs to just scaring him away a little bit. Decides not to commit. They haven't got the means to lock him down or chase on through. So far, Ace has been kind of left to his own devices to farm where he wants and do what he wants. Problem is, half the time what he wants to do is kill people. And, well, they're usually too tanky to do that. Yeah, this is this is where it starts to come out that you just don't have much to deal with this drug split push. And Secret wants to fight right now. They've got the S and Y on their lifesteal. They might be forced to. There's a smoke movement. Hex is going to come out pretty damn early. And he's just already able to get away. Puppy going to be dragged in. The but no, they drew up the toss through. And now, Freezing Field in the runway. The English Spartans is going to go to work yeah. with the Phantasm. Gets one kill. Nisha forced to fight, but locked in place. Needs to get out of it. Omni Sash is going to come out to Yapsor alone. Tries to move across to his team. Mid one tries to duke it out. We'll be able to do so in Remnant away. They force the buyback out of the CM. They do lose the lifesteal as well. And they might lose more. Zai is stuck here. He can't move away. Quick enough to surge. A little bit too late. Avalanche is going to be there. Chaos Knight getting low. Not low enough. They're going to chase forward. Puppy in a little bit of trouble. Fada is going to heal up 33. They won't die at the base, but they do get a lot of kills out of that. Three dead on the side of Secret with one buying back. Yeah, a good chunk of that is that Fata got the level four Nether Ward down there on the high ground before the fight even began. So when CM got to her spell combo, she just got eaten alive by the Nether Ward damage and the 10 armor didn't matter. They were able to get rid of her early on. Looked like it might not be too bad, but the Avalanche interrupting the life drain almost instantly. But Saxa, he placed that perfectly. The Ignis ruined everything. Absolutely. You know, the, the Cod ulti was great, and it's it's just always... Secret were kind of backing there. They were the ones that were trying to reset to take a fight and go on the aggressive. And I, the timing of that NIP move was just right. Because I think if Secret are able to set up and come into them, that's potentially a very different fight. But being able to take it on the high ground there, just, you know, 30 seconds earlier than Secret expected. That's the decisive angle. And as a result, Ninjas do finally manage to increase that net worth lead now up to the 8,000, 9,000k mark. <laughs> Too shabby, the 25 Nine, minute 9,000k, 9, that's a lot. 9,000k, I know, right? My, my maths has turned pretty NA on me in the last few moments. Oh wow, we we really gonna do that? We gonna go? We gonna go EU versus NA? Oh, chat, have fun. <laughs> hey, I'll have you know, there's a majority of Europeans in this lobby. Okay. My boy Sniff, he supports the numbers as well. I hear they don't lie. <laughs> All right. Let's look at the progression here because. Still an issue, I think, on the side of Seeker, especially after that last fight. Uh, that mid one, he's he's been okay after a pretty rough start, but he's starting to look awfully poor. And that's a big item right there. That is a huge item for the Chaos Knight. Heart of Tarask up. This is an offlane Chaos Knight, by the way, guys. Just keep that in yeah. mind. This isn't your your boss one getting a 27 minute heart plus armlet. This is your offline. And mid one is nowhere near to contest this, right? Like he needs to be the counter later on to this Chaos Knight, but he's not even going for a battle fury. He's got the Maelstrom and he'll be going towards the Lincolns next. Rough tidings. They just keep trying to shove in this mid lane and credit to ninjas where credit is due. Keeping this tier one alive in the mid at 27 minutes in. 
it's crucial mm -hmm. to ensuring there's no opportunity to ever try and sneak in by secret. Well, that's that's the difference, right? Is that NIP can set up and make a move like that last fight on the dire side of the map because of the presence of that mid tier one. Secret can't do the same. They can't set up and go into nip on an unexpected timing. They might go into ace though. Problem is he does have a TP to get out. They have no way of stopping they, it. Yeah, they they can't stop spin TP. This is the issue that we talked about from the very beginning. And they won't have any means to anytime soon either. You look at the life still yeah, on. No a, abyssal plan. There's no hex builder. I mean, you can't you can't get something that's just going to instant initiate on him. I guess Darkseer can build it eventually, but maybe Poppy eventually as well with the, the 150 oh. GPM talent. <laughs> true, true. All right. Might that's finally allow him to get his Glimmer Cape as well. Yeah, uh, he's not he's not far from level 15. That's why he's farming in the jungle by himself. But guys, I don't want to be a liability, but I do want to have some XP, and these ganks are not working. Oh, made one in the bot lane. Looking on the farther here. X is going to come out, though. Life Drain instantly cancelled as he realizes it's a bad idea. But Searing Chains will lock him in place. All the remnants committed to ensure the kill. Big kill. And, well, definitely big. Look at the gold swing. Oh, he, yeah, he needed gold. that so bad. Oh, my God. Ends the kill streak there. That's the springboard that that Ember has needed for so long. Now the bot lane will push in. Someone has to go and address that. They might even hang around and try and punish yeah, whoever that, arrives. That, that mid tier one tower needs to die somehow. Mid one's moving in now. He was trying uh, to scout. Look at the setting fist. up the infest bomb. He's got 33 if he wants him. Question is, who does want the Yapsor right now? Oh, and, and and NIP do not know where Secret is. No, they don't. Instead, they push on the base in the top lane. Ace is going to be interrupted by Yapsor. Omni slash comes out. Whoops. Well, he at least forces Ace a little bit deeper, but Ace can easily escape now. Yeah. Now I smoked up. They're moving in now, but the problem is you can just TP out. Spin right. and TP. They have just nothing to stop that. I mean, Ace can be all over their base all game long. And that's the thing. You can pressure them and until they respond to you every time as well. You don't have to be very careful not to go too deep. And with the Tiny down, they're just going to pressure the Roche, the Roche Pit. This is I, gonna be a tough contest. I don't think they're quick enough though. It's gonna be close if they keep getting reluctant. Uh oh, Poppy. Yeah. In trouble. We'll pull here. And now it's definitely. It doesn't matter seconds. how fast you are when when you can win a fight. That's true, and they're still holding on the phantasm all along. It should be an Aegis or I'd assume A is Spokery shouldn't need it with a heart now. No, there 33 is. is unkillable. Mid one has switched it up. Identified that there's no way a Lincolns gets you back in this game. He's going to go for the Octarine Core instead. Wow. I still feel like you just try and total down with a Battle Fury. Yeah, I was wondering at some point, once you see that the CK already has hard up, you know, you're going to need a way to deal with those illusions eventually. I'm not sure Octarine's going to get you there. It's definitely will not. Mid one just farm the creep wave to try and stop them from Honestly? pushing. Honestly? Honestly, what you need is you need an abyssal on life stealer. And he's he's going for assault Kuras, which is yeah, you can't really criticize him for, but they have to have a way to deal with this jug. Yeah, I mean in this type of game with the amount of wreck that they have, I get why he's doing it. Bane the bot lane. Mid one very slowly trying to kill him. Maybe we'll finally be able to get it, but well, <laughs> PBD wastes a lot of the time because in their base they've already lost a town. Now they might lose a hero. Hex does get Life Stealer away. Back to him and build for the rest of NIP. 33. Phantasm's up. Turns around. Oh, Nisha has to back away. And now they drag in Yaptor. Avalanche comes out. There's the freezing food as well. But too far away. And Ignis drags him in. 33 re engages. Poppy. Gonna get low. Crimson Scar protects, but not for long. The Omni Slash coming out. What will kill off one? Might kill off four. They're gonna push them back further away from safety. Nisha locked in place with the double Ignis. No! They're gonna melt straight through them. Buyback comes out from Zai. Problem is, they are not leaving your base anytime soon, even with that buyback. And a bigger problem, Life Stealer does not have a way back into this. They might just go for the second lane, they'll realize this in a second. And it just became obvious. Back to the base. To hit more buildings. Lanes are pushing in, but PPD's back in the base to deal with that. Hmm. Yapsaw, trying to make a move. Up, yeah. He's in trouble. Going to try and get away with the surge. We'll be able to do so. Crimson Guard will slow them down. But, well, one 
thing to say is slow down. You will never say stop, though. Two lanes cleaned up by NIP. Now up to a 30,000 net worth lead. Yeah, and, and mid one furiously cutting waves to try and protect against Megas, but you can see the drawings that are coming out of the mini map. Yeah, they, they're just going to call it. I think that's I think that's the right decision. You're not coming back into this game. I, I, again, the, I really the decisive thing there was NIP's ability to get onto the dire side of the map to take that big engagement uh, on from the high ground in the dire's own jungle. Right as secret, I feel we're at we're on the verge of their own power spike. Uh, they were they were resetting to make a move. Instead, it was NIP that takes it, and that's that's what finally pushed that sort of three and four K net worth lead that they had been nursing for so long out into the range where they were going to be able to to make a decisive base push. The result that does mean the NIP have struck back. We will have a game free here between these two sides, and well. At the start of the series, you would have happily said Secret are going to run away with this. But now, with a dominant showing by an IP, people are going to be question marking any bets they're thrown down anywhere because yeah. this one could really go either way. We will find out which way it's going to go in a few minutes after we go to a break, after we have you stare at a screen of the two logos of the teams. Enjoy that. See ya.